All right, so again, if you have not started to do so, please turn to page five on tutorial, Swift Tutorial Part 2, and down near the bottom, the author says, let's build this user interface one piece at a time. So there are two steps on the bottom of page five, and there are six more steps that make up all of page six. If you can, try to do those. If you have problems, I will do the best I can to help you with them. But I'd like to take about 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do that, and hopefully at 4.30, reconvene and pick it up on page 7 on a view, a view controller tutorial. Talk about that a little bit. And I was hoping we get through this today, but if we don't, if we only get through half of it today, fine. Then we get through the rest of it next time. I still think that in the end, this is going to save us time come spring. All right. And, and no, Mark, you know, to answer you kind of the question or the comment you made before, we're doing SWIFT. I don't know how we're doing it, but we're doing it. No, no, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm saying that is technically that's what I put into all the stuff for the syllabus and everything else, and that's what the book is. I, I literally, that's a good time. All right, so it says, let's build this user interface one piece at a time. So the steps again on pages five and six are what I'm gonna do between now and 4.30. All right. all understand for step one where it says uh, select your view controller literally they mean either click on the view controller itself all right so either click here or click over here and then as it says go to editor embed in navigation controller like that it says this will set up a navigation bar in your view controller all right and there it is Double click the navigation bar, the one inside your view controller, and set the text to tip calculator. Oh, I thought that was it. Somewhere in here, there, there, otherwise there's a thing in here, should be a thing in here someplace that says it. And we'll find it. I'm not worried about it. There's navigation bar. you're talking about. No, what they asked you to do, what we did last time, was we grabbed what was in that playground, created a new file, copied it in, and it was called Tip Calculator. They asked you to change the name to Tip Calculator Model. That's all. That's the only change you should have had to make.
uh, one thing you've got to make sure that what you're doing is I had to drag, I like you said, I had to double uh, double swipe on it. You want to make sure that you're in the view controller and not in the navigation controller. I was in the navigation controller. As soon as I went to the view controller and I clicked on it, then I got the title show. what from?
right, this is what I've got. It's following the steps that they put on there. Now, some of that stuff, if you haven't already noticed it, it's a pain in the butt. You're switching back and forth between different inspectors and whatever. And sometimes, sometimes when you're in an inspector, you're like, it tells you what inspector to be, and you're like, that, what you're asking me to do doesn't exist there. Yes, it does. You have to take your mouse and put it way over to the side, and you'll notice there's like a little black slider that you have to slide up and down because some of the stuff doesn't show. Also, I just changed the orientation by doing a hardware rotate left because when I had it showing in portrait mode, it was pushed way up against the side. Now, I just followed everything that they said to do. All right? And it's, of course, it's not done yet. There's no code. It's, the code isn't wired up. But ideally, at least, I think this is the way it's supposed to be looking right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save my project and everything I've done so far, and I'm going to throw that out there on the system if you want it. If you don't, if you're where yours is working fine, stay with yours. All right? But if you had any kind of problems, it'll be out there, and you'll have to get a flash drive, and, you'll ha and I'll have to get one too. I guess I'll have to go upstairs and grab one of the flash drives. But... Um, I'll move everything over, and then you can you can copy it over if you want to do that. All right, but I want to finish this thing, so not today. But um, on page seven, the author says, if you skipped ahead to this section, here is a zip of the project to this point. So you can grab that also if you want to. All right. Since so, so far you've created your your apps, models, and views, it's time to move on to the view controller. So they want you to literally open up the view controller .swift file. So I'm going to stop the simulator here, and I'm going to open up the viewcontroller.swift file. And as the author says right here, and this is page 7, it says you will see the class has the following code in it already. You'll notice that it imports UI kit, which means that it's able to, you know, the UI kit again is responsible for you being able to put in all of your user interface elements. All right? But right now, there is a view did load which just calls the parent view did load, and there is a did receive memory warning, which just calls the parent did receive memory warning. And there's nothing else in it right now. So in other words, it's not really doing much of anything right now. All right, so it says there are some new elements of Swift here you have not learned about yet, so let's go over them one at a time. So that first thing that's up there, that import UI kit that you see on the screen, it says iOS is split up into multiple frameworks. UIKit is the framework that contains the base class for the view controllers, things like buttons, text fields, etc. Step two on there is where it says class view controller colon UI view controller. And they're saying this is subclassing. You're declaring a new class view controller that subclasses the Apple's UI view controller. All right, they say note or experienced iOS developers, you don't have to add namespaces. We did that previously. If you remember for the, uh, the bullseye, all right, we, I put BE in front of some of that stuff for bullseye. You don't have to do that anymore. All right. The author says, to see what I mean, replace this with that. I don't think you have to do that. All right. The third thing that's in there, where it says override funk view did load, the author says, this method is called when the root view of this view controller is first accessed. Whenever you override, this is, this is important that you hear this. Whenever you override a method in Swift, you need to mark it with the override keyword. Notice the keyword there. All right. It says, this is to help you avoid a situation where you accidentally do an override. And the last thing that's up there, that thing with did receive the memory it says, uh, this method is called when the device is running low on memory. It's a good place to clean up any resources you can possibly clean up. All right? That gets us to the middle of page 8, where I wanted to start today, but that's where we are now. And on there it says, connecting your view controller to the views. Okay? So what the author says to do right here, and I'm going to do it, is the author says manually go into your view controller file right before the view did load and manually right here type in four lines of code
habits. So if you look up on the screen, even if you've been doing it yourself, that's fine. The author says this is what you're supposed to do. In the past, we have been wiring these up, but the author tells you here to manually put them in. Then he explains on the bottom half of page 8, he says here you are declaring four variables, just as you learned in the first Swift tutorial. A UI text field, which is for our total, a UI slider for our slider, a UI label for the tax percentage, and a UI text view for the results. It says there are only two differences. Again, I'm on the bottom of page 8. You are prefixing these variables with at IB outlet. Interface Builder scans your code looking for any properties in your view controller prefixed with this keyword. It exposes any properties it discovers so they can be connected to views. All right. Two, it says you are marking these variables with an exclamation mark. You'll notice all four of them end with an exclamation mark. All right. And it says there, this indicates that these are optional values, but they are implicitly unwrapped. This is a fancy way of saying you can write code assuming they can and will be and are set. If they're not set, the app will crash. In other words, when you are supposed to provide the input for, for the program, if you provide no input as of now, the program will, will crash. That's what the author says. Then on the very bottom, on the very bottom of page 8, the author says implicitly unwrapped optionals are a convenient way to create variables you know for sure will be set before you use them. Then turning to page 9, the author says, let's try connecting these properties to their user interface elements. All right. So first thing we're told here is to open up our main storyboard. And there it is. And then it says to open the connect connections inspector, which is the last tab right there. It says you will see all the properties created in the outlet section. Well, I don't see them, but let's just keep going on. It says you notice a small circle to the result, to the right rather, of result text view. Well, I'm looking for it. I don't see it. Let's see. All right, everybody hear that? Click click on the view controller, all right? And now you should see 
the things that we just we just created. All right. Thank you. It says you will notice a small circle to the result to the right of the results text view. Control drag from there down to the text view below the calculate button and release to connect this to that view. So they're saying click on here, then control click like we had done before, drag down here and let go. It says, now repeat this for the other three properties, connecting each one to the appropriate UI element. Well, this right here, all right, we know what that is. So we want to find our, what is that? It is the total text field. So we want to click on there, then control click and drag that onto here and let go. All right. Then we've got the slider. Okay, so again, click on here, find the slider, control click, and drag over to here. All right? And I think the other one was the button, probably. The label. I think the button we're going to set up the old-fashioned way. All right. And that's the label, I believe, right there. All right. All right. So I believe now all of them are wired up. Now, please take a look on the, the middle of page 9 on your page. Because in the middle, in this box that's green on the screen here, but yours isn't green, it probably looks grayish, it says, note, there's another even easier way to connect views on properties to your view controller. Remember that? This is the way we did it before. So in other words, if you look up on the screen right now, if I come back here and I took all those connections that we saw right there and I removed all of the connections, what the author is saying is what we, excuse me, what we could have done is we could have come over here and I don't remember which one it is, but we want to bring up the assistant editor. So it's view assistant editor, show assistant editor. So it's view assistant editor, show assistant editor. Remember this, when we did it before, where we were actually just physically dragging them over? This is the way we did it for the bullseye thing. We didn't manually type in those lines of code. What we did instead of, instead of manually typing in those lines of code, I'll try to talk louder. So they just showed you another way of doing what we had previously done in a different way. If you go, I don't understand. So then we, what we have to do is literally remove these variables. All right, so the author is saying the other way of doing it would have been to physically come in here, and we're running out of time, so I'm not going to do it right now, but to physically come in here, remove those four variables, and add them using the assistant editor. That's what we did. You go, I don't get it. You already did it. That's what we ended up doing when we did the bullseye. All right? So I'm going to pick it up there next time. I'm on the middle of page 9. I'll remove these things when we start, and then we'll add them again the other way that we used to do things, and we'll, we'll pick it up from there. Hopefully we can finish this on Monday. All right? I'm going to save this. And I will put it out there. Again, it'll be out there by, by tomorrow. Probably not by tonight, but it'll be out there by tomorrow, and it'll be in a folder with today's date on it. I'll have my whole project out there. So if you, you're behind or if something didn't work, to my knowledge, everything I have 
to this point works.